Empire in Brooklyn. Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn that a word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father, to the Son, whose name is Yahweh Shua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not works, so that anyone should vote. Given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. <laughs> In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. That's it. Thanks for in the room. Thank you. Thanks for watching on the camera. But no peace to the wicked. Only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. So listen. I just got a call today from. Uh, you remember uh, KKBB? No. Uh, you, you remember 1060 AM? Nah. You ain't listen to 1060 AM? Back no. When we had Christmas? No. Oh. I remember, uh, nah, it was uh, like, what's the station number? But I remember, it's like 90.1, and then it's another, like 98.1. It's two of them. Oh, it's 1060. This one is 1060. I don't think I ever heard 1060. 1060, super Christmas. <sighs> mm -hmm. Let me have a whole bunch of stuff on over like years, not a lot, but like maybe four or five times over the last year, probably a lot, over the last like probably six years or something, I send them, you know what I'm saying, quest, you know what I'm saying. If I turn my stuff in audio, can I get a spot? Can I get a spot? They hit me for the first time. I sent it to them a couple of days or maybe a couple of weeks ago. Quest called me today. Work. Yeah, so. Viewed your your request, and I'd like to meet with you. Um, you come down Monday, not this Monday. I was like, you gotta give me some time. I work Monday through Friday. Is that another? You gotta give me some time. So you push it out a couple weeks. I can arrange for it. It's like, well, no, 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 that's okay. I'm actually going to be uh, doing training here at the station on Sunday. Can you come Sunday? I told her, Christian, but I told her I was like. Oh, I ain't doing nothing Sunday. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't doing nothing Sunday. Oh, all right, for sure. I'll come on down. You know what I'm saying? We'll see. So, my expectation, <laughs> they're going to be like, you can't say this about white folks. You can't say this about Christians. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be. <laughs> Why even go down there? <laughs> because I can't wait to have that conversation. That's hilarious. I, I mean, best case scenario, they don't say that. I was gonna say, I wouldn't even want to go down there. Yeah, they, 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 they might say, you know, they, you know, they, they might not have a problem at all. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't heard of, I didn't listen to the thing. It's been some wild stuff. On there. They didn't have some. They didn't have Hebrew Israelites on there. They had, they had this. They, they, they had this lady that do all types of. Stuff. I didn't heard some wild stuff on there. That's not your standard Christian, you know, what I'm saying, line. But I, I ain't never heard nobody. Like that. Uh -oh. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's what I'm expecting. But it's like, oh, the gall of a white person to bring a white Christian to bring me down. And when I had that conversation to my face, I'm like, oh, you better believe. I'm like, I've been waiting for this all my darn life. <laughs> so, you know, I'm like, we'll see. So if I send this, I'm going to have to cut this part out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just start it out. You know what I'm saying? Just start it out. After this. No. But yeah, no, nah, uh, all just society. Huh? So, you know what I'm saying? Get that thing on the air and. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. You know what I'm saying? As long as they ain't asking me to compromise. You know what I'm saying? They're just talking too much, asking me to do too much. We stick with it. YouTube is treating us all right. Like, with the eye. Um, all right. So the heart, you know what I'm saying? What we got? Where we got last week? What do you remember is the question. Hmm? I don't even know how you read that. You got goodness. That's my dad, me, then you. You know what I'm saying? Like my dad, he got bad hair. Me, I got horrible hair. You? Sheesh. Do do, 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 do uncle gotta teach you everything? Wait, no. Cause I got some good hair, right? That's bad. I'm just saying, you you just come talk to me. You need some help. This is a born with the left hand. Oh. Yeah. All right, so what we got? Come on, you got all them notes. You know what I'm talking about? Don't worry, son. I never 
probably take notes too this guy. <laughs> take notes. I think it was never on this guy. You know what I'm saying? Something oh, wrong with your dad. Really? When I take, I, I never, I stopped taking notes. It was cool. You know what I'm saying? Whenever I took notes, I write down something that has nothing to do with the show. You know what I'm saying? It's stuff that I think is interesting too. I was like, oh, ain't, ain't no way I'm gonna remember that. I better write it down. I was obsessed. Everything on the test I remembered already. You know what I'm saying? I write down all this stuff that I thought, oh no. They, have, they never asked me to touch stuff or stuff I think was tough. You know what I'm saying? After that, I was like, I don't need those books. I threw a whole time in school, never took them. Never took them. You know what I'm saying? Just remember what I remembered. You know what I'm saying? Put together what I could put together. You know what I'm saying? Most of the things. Every now and again. Most of the things. I don't really fail tests. Not too often. Yeah. I remember like proficiencies. You know what I'm saying? Everybody used to add me school. Them I things are pretty I easy. Failed, I failed my proficiency. It's that and other, da da da. He used to be the math and everybody was scared of it. I'm like, yeah, my math proficiency is that and other. Wow, well, school. My teacher would tell you, you better study. I used to study. Especially for math. It's like, what are you studying for? Yeah, it's like, it, except for like formula. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have to but outside of that, it's like, what are you studying? Math is logical. A study. First chance. And, you know, I'm like, boy, what's wrong? The that? only reason why I didn't pass the first one because I never had geometry. But when I took geometry, went back, easy peasy. Mm. And I'm looking like, man, y'all are so. <laughs> yeah. Bro, bro, because you remember that day, remember that day junior year, we didn't have to go to school because all the things was done. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else was still in school testing. I was like one of the few, you know what I'm saying, that was like out getting into stupid stuff. I had no business too. Oh, uh, you got you got my answers yet? What we what we do last week? Huh. You? Oh, the guy we can't buy good help around. Kai, what what you remember? Uh, seven, eight. Uh, I have a belly button. <laughs> yeah, you take bad notes like me. All right, keep going. That's the only mm. note you took all that? Was you sleeping? Did you fall asleep again? I'm trying to get the day. We got, you know, we got to teach the people. The restaurant is popular. So Jerusalem is popular, <laughs> okay. Careful. Or no, just like me. How's that, my boy? Yeah, yeah go to city. All right, we we dealt with you. Let me see that. Help us out too. What we talking about last week? Your handwriting better than your daddy's. Uh, <laughs> I gave you the order. My dad, me, then you. All right. So, you know, my man, uh, Jeroboam, king of Israel. Now the kingdom is split between David's, David's sons and Jeroboam. So you got Israel and Judah. Um, my man, Jeroboam, starts setting up his own type of holiday, starts setting up his own priests contradicting the word of God, you know, he prevented the people from going down three times a year like they were supposed to, which which became sin for him. So he put he put altars in Bethel and he put some in Dan, right? Golden calves. He put golden calves in both of these places. Getting that from what the mistake that Aaron made back in the wilderness when Moses was uh in the mountain of God, talking to God. So you know remember books that he got counsel. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Books that he got counsel. They gave him counsel. They told him. They looked at him like, yo, look, Aaron. You know what I mean? This is how you got to imagine it happened. Aaron had golden calf in the game. Too. Maybe what you should do is introduce the golden calf back to the people and put them in such a place. You know what I'm saying? That came from counsel. That means that these people were searching out the book, looking for a way to kind of manipulate the people. You got to. Pay attention because we talked about how that's the exact same thing that Christians did. All right, Christians yeah. manipulated the pagans. Because the Christians were looking like, look, we just want everybody to serve Jesus Christ. Right? And on the surface, that sounds good. Right? It's the same attitude that Christians got now. It don't matter 
The only thing that matters is that you know that Jesus Christ died on the cross. Mm -hmm. Nothing else matters to them. But that's not what the book is saying. So on the surface, yes, that sounds good until you understand the book. When you understand the book, the book is about not compromising. Right? So you have you have Christians that will tell you, you know what I'm saying, like, okay, well, sure, you might be celebrating and worshiping God Saturn, right? And on December 25th, that's when you worship the God Saturn. So Christians would say, okay, well, don't worry about that. Just stop worshiping Saturn. Do the same tradition, set up your tree, put a star on top of it, dump and decorate it. The same thing you used to do, which used to be an idol, right? Do those same traditions. Now, just say that you're worshiping Jesus instead. Set a Saturn and worship Jesus. Keep the same tradition, same days, this, that, and other. Just change who you're giving to worship. And that's inappropriate for our God, right? You can't give, you can't turn something dirty and make it clean for God. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Only God can make something. He don't make it clean. That ain't dirty. It's not right. It's unrighteous. Right? So we look at that as a, you know, the, that's an attitude that's of the world, right? That thing come from the devil. The devil influenced people to have that attitude. When I say that attitude, I'm talking about the attitude to say, hey, how can I cause the people to do something that makes them think they're doing the right thing? Technically, it's not right. So that's why Jeroboam came up with the two calves. What else, what else Jeroboam do? What else happened after that, right? Uh, a man of God came to him and told him. Well, we yeah, we just got to the man of God uh, right before we ended. But what else happened? We had a whole other king, right? What about uh, Solomon's son? The real bum. Yeah. He was about to go up and fight, try to take his kingdom back. And the prophet told him, no, don't go up and fight against your brothers because this is from me. Right? The kingdom is split. You know what I mean? So he was like, don't do that. Don't even do it. Right? So God was like, no, this is from me. You not don't go up north to fight your brothers. I did this because to, I did this to punish Solomon for what he did. And now that now you're gonna have to share the kingdom with Israel and Judah. So it's split now. So everybody went home, they didn't go fight. So let's take a look as we recap. And Jeroboam didn't listen to the counsel of the wise old men. He listened to the counsel of his friends, people of, uh, in his corner, telling them to be more strict on the people. And that's, what, that's one of the reasons that the people was led to rebel against the kingdom and start their own in Israel. Boy, you playing uh, solitaire over there. Alright. Um, all right, so when we look at this, we're looking at um all the tribes of Israel, right? So if you look at all the tribes, all of them come from Jacob. Jacob was given the name Israel. Right? So these are all the tribes of Israel. And of those tribes, you can see one of those tribes is highlighted purple. And the other one is highlighted black. Right? The reason why one are actually the tribes, the sons are highlighted purple, and one is highlighted black. The one that's highlighted purple is the Levi, because he was pulled from being one of the tribes. That had um, inherited, inherited mm-hmm. right? So he was separated, and God was made his inheritance. In other words, everything that people gave to God, like tithes or offerings, right, that ended up going to Levi. Levi, his inheritance died. His inheritance was the stuff that the people gave to God. You know, then, you know what I'm saying, you have Joseph, who was also a son. Joseph, instead of Joseph being a tribe, his sons, two of his sons, right, were made to be tribes in this place, and they were actually made to be as if they were the eldest sons of Jacob. Right? He, Jacob grand- adopted them as sons, right. not grandsons. So you have the older whose name is Manasseh, and you have the younger whose name is Ephraim. Ephraim was made to be like them. 
oldest son, right? So those are the 12 tribes, right? If you look at on the screen, all the ones that are highlighted blue, that represents the 12 tribes of Israel. That's important to know because those 12 tribes split. So if we look at the split, I think I got the split. So, okay, yeah. So if you look at the split, this is how they were split. They were split with 10 tribes on the left side, right? And then we're going to read about how Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, right, stayed in uh, Judah. That would be the right side. And so we would call the left side the northern tribes or the northern kingdom. Or Israel. Or the kingdom of Israel. Mm -hmm. And then you would have the right side, which would be the southern tribes or the southern kingdom or the kingdom of Judah. Right? It's important that you kind of know that because you're going to see as we, as we get into prophecy, you're going to see Israel, and you're going to see Judah, and all these different things. And it's going to be confusing sometimes because sometimes Israel could be talking about the whole shebang. And sometimes, in some context, Israel is just talking about the northern kingdom. So I'm going to try to call it out as we go through it and say, okay, we, we, and soon, pretty soon, in the future, we're going to start diving into a lot of prophecy. So I'm going to try to start calling it out and just say, okay, no, that's talking about northern kingdom. That's talking about Israel, the entire nation, right? So this is kind of how, how that breakdown went. <clears throat> so this is what the map looks like, right? If we look at the map, map is basically showing that that green area is the northern kingdom of Israel. The orange area is Judah, right? The southern kingdom. So you can see here that this is Bethel. This is where Jeroboam built it's one of the uh, one of the altars he put here in Bethel in the high place, and then he built one in Dan. <laughs> he built them this way because it gives people a way to go and worship God. So he told them without actually having to go into Jerusalem, which he did that to kind of protect himself, right? So now let's look at this next slide. This next slide is showing us all the kings of Israel and Judah, the two kings. That's why I wanted to make sure y'all understand the split so we can talk about all the kings. One thing you're going to notice is that for the most part, the kingdom of Judah, which is on the left side, goes straight down, right? What that's signifying is that all these are the same family. In other words, they're going directly son to son to son to son. And then here at the bottom, you can see that there's a situation where there's three sons that end up holding the kingdom, right? But still, it was passed down from a father to a son. Three times the different sons, right? But still from a father to a son. So as you look over to Israel, the difference here is Everything is scattered, right? That means that these are not, uh, the next king didn't come from the offspring of the previous king, right? Or isn't of the same family necessarily as the previous king. So I want you guys to see that because when we talk about it, we don't talk about the difference between these kingdoms. One, it was given to, given to uh, David by promise that he'll kind of have a continuous line. And then Israel, Jeroboam that we're about to talk about now never kept the promise that the Most High God gave him. Most High God told him similar things to what he, some of the similar things that he told to David, but Jeroboam didn't keep it. He immediately sinned. He built these altars, caused the people to sin. He made anybody a Levite, any the lowest of people. He just made them. Sorry, not a Levite. He made anybody a priest. Right. Our requirement is that you had to be not only a Levite, but you had to be specifically a parent. He just made anybody a priest. Didn't know, didn't matter where you came from, who your daddy was. So this is what we're gonna kind of go in. I wanted to make sure y'all see this. I'm gonna keep this visual up just to make sure we kind of see. But I want y'all to see that we start with Saul, right? Then after that, remember Saul died along with Jonathan, right? Then you had Saul's son. Saul had another son. It was Ishbosheth, right? So then Ishbosheth took the kingdom. 
That was like the first time for under under the kingdom that the kingdom kind of split because he took the northern tribes, right? And David took Judah at that point. Then everything got consolidated, right? Y'all remember Abner, you know what I'm saying? They got into a little beef. Abner, you know, brought the kingdom to him, uh, brought the kingdom to David. After that, you know what I'm saying, uh, Joab killed that, right? So David took the whole kingdom after that. And after David, you remember uh, uh, Adonijah, he tried, to, he tried to set himself up as king. Everybody heard about it. And then Solomon uh, would end up given the kingdom by David. So ultimately, Solomon was the next king. Um, and then Rehoboam comes from Solomon. And he's the current king that we're on right now, right? So we're on Rehoboam right now. On the other side, we have Jeroboam, right? So at the same time, we have Rehoboam and we have Jeroboam as king. That's kind of where, where we'll kind of pick up from. So let's go to, uh, I think we left off of 1 Kings chapter 13. I don't know what verse. Nine. This 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 9, just to catch us up a little bit. Remember the man of God. Actually, let's just start at verse 1. It's 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 1. Watch the book say. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of Yahuwah unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus says Yahuwah. Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon you shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon you, and men's bones shall be burnt upon you. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be ripped, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass, when the king Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which he cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up so that he could not pull it into him again. And the altar also was ripped and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of Yahuwah your God and pray for me that my hand may be restored to me again. Mm -hmm. And the man of God besought the Lord and the king's hand was restored to him again and became as it was before. Mm -hmm. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me and refresh yourself, and I will give you a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If you were to give me half your house, I will not go in with you, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For it was told to me by the word of Yahuwah, saying, Eat no bread nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that you came. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Right? So what did we talk about how this, you know, what does this relate to? Passover. No. No, we talked about how this related to Balaam. Balaam. Right? Because Balaam, Balaam, he he had a similar situation where he was, you know what I'm saying, trying to convince, like, hey, why don't you come with me? Right? And Balaam actually did go. And when, when Balaam went, they tried to get them to curse the Israelites. He tried to get Balaam to, to curse Balaam, tried to get Balaam to curse the Israelites. Right? He said that no, I can't curse them. I can only say what God tells me to say. That's exactly what Balaam did. He only said what God told him to say. But at the very end, the book say he returned and went back. Right? So we look at it here. Dude, that's why the Most High God warned the man of God, like, look, do not go back the same way. So he's looking at this is what happened with Balaam. And then the Most High God told us in uh, Deuteronomy 18, I think it was, he said, he said, uh, he said, the, the Moabites didn't greet you with water and bread. Right? So now you can see why the Most High God is telling him, look, don't even have water and bread with these people. Because the Most High God is letting them know, like, these people are out to get you. Like, these people will try to deceive you. Just trust me. Don't go the same way that you got here. Take a different route. And don't even eat or drink with these people. Keep moving. Right? These were specific instructions given to the man of God. Right? Keep going. Let's see what happens. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his, and his son came and told him all the words that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. The right. words which he had spoken unto the king, they told him also to their father. So you got to look at it like, 
Y'all, there was an old prophet. So remember, there's an old man, and he was also a prophet, right? There's an old prophet, and he was in Bethel. Jeroboam is in Bethel. He he sacrificing at the altar. You see a man of God come up, and he start rattling off the mouth, talking about everything that's gonna happen to this altar. Jeroboam, like man, don't disrespect my altar. Point at him. his arms shrivel up. All of a sudden, Jeroboam gets hungry. He look like man, why don't you go and pray for me and get my arm back? The man of God pray for him. He get his arm back. Right? So then he like, man, why don't you come with me? The man of God said, nope, can't do that. Can't drink with you, can't eat with you. I can't even go back the same way. I got to take a different route. The whole time, the son is watching this. The son of the old prophet, he's watching this. So he's looking at it, he's looking like, that's crazy. This dude kind of like my dad. So then he ran back to his dad. He's like, man, you won't believe it. It's a prophet out there. He did this, that, and the other, the arm mouth, they crushed it up, you know what I'm saying? Dried up on it, he prayed for it, came back, wild stuff out. Right? So then, dad was like, oh, really? Let's see what he said. And their father said unto them, which way did he go? Mm -hmm. For his sons had seen the way that the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, saddle me the donkey. So they saddled him the donkey, and he rode thereon, mm -hmm. and went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. And he uh -huh. said unto him, Are you the man of God that came from Judah? And he said, I am. Uh -huh. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with you, nor go with you. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with you in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, You shall eat no bread nor drink water there, nor turn again by the way that you came. Right? So now, mm -hmm. the man of God told the old prophet the exact same thing. Right? He told him, listen, I cannot go back. Listen, I hear you, but I cannot go back with you. Nor can I eat bread with you or drink water because that's just not what I'm supposed to do. Matter of fact, I can't even go back the same way. But watch what the old prophet said. And he said unto him, I am a prophet also, just like you. Right? So the old prophet tell him, oh, no, no, no. I'm a prophet just like you are. You know what I'm talking about? You a prophet, I'm a prophet. Look, we we of the same thing. What did the old, the old prophet say? And an angel spake unto me by the word of Yahuwah, saying, Bring him back with you to your house, uh -huh. that he may eat bread and drink water. Uh -huh. But he lied unto me. Right? So the old prophet said, Listen, I'm a prophet too. And the most high God said to me, He told me to come get you and bring you back to the house. But the book said, But he lied. That wasn't true. Right? So let's see what the man of God said. So he went back with him and did eat in his house and drank water. That's the tricky part, right? Here's the tricky part. This man is an old prophet. So in other words, he was known to be a prophet. Let's just, let's just say, we don't know, but let's say the man of God knew of him as being a prophet. And then he tell him, I'm a prophet too. Imagine like he in a town, all the people bowing for him. No, he a prophet for sure. Right? All these people vouching for he a prophet, you see he a prophet, the man of God then got to make a decision like, okay, I know what God told me, but maybe, you know what I'm saying, maybe this is different. Maybe it's a different situation. Right? So he takes this man's word and he goes. What's the problem with that? Though? He took his man's word over what God told him. Most high God gave him specific instructions. Right? Specific instructions that he was supposed to go with. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 18. Give me verse 20. The Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20. Watch what the book says. All right, it is very important that we stand on God's word. Same thing I'm talking about with this radio station. Same thing I'm talking about anywhere. We cannot, we can compromise any. Any of our stuff, any any of little extras that we put on here, right? That could be that stuff don't matter. When it comes, me, when it comes to God's word, that can never be. When it comes to the truth being taught, that can never be. When it comes to what God say do, that can never be. We always gotta walk forward justly. Honestly, according to God's word, everything else got to come. 
right? Everything else got to be got to come. From. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter eighteen, verse twenty. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Uh -huh. And if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that thing which the Lord has not spoken, but the prophet has spoken it presumptuously, you shall not be afraid of him. So in other words, you know you're dealing with a prophet. Whenever he say something, and it happens. Right? At that point, you know you're dealing with a prophet. So if this man didn't know him to be a prophet, based off of something he said, and he contradicts something that he heard, he should have never followed it. Right? But these are things that the man of God has to learn on the fly. Like, we have a whole bunch of books. We got Jeremiah telling us, hey, the prophets that came before me, you know what I'm saying? Prophesy a calamity. You know what I'm saying? But let a prophet that prophesy a peace only be known as a prophet, a prophet after what he said come to pass. Mm -hmm. Like we got that from Jeremiah. We also got from, from Paul in the New Testament where he said, the prophets must be subject to the prophets. Right? But the man of God didn't have that. If the man of God had that, perhaps he would have been able to say, you know what? God told me this. So I know anything that God told tell you got to be in line with what he told me. This ain't can't clap. He, he telling you something directly different from what he told me. I know that can't be the case. But the man of God didn't have that. Right? So this stuff is here for our admonition. Right? It's for our learning, our education, for our example, for our warning. Right? So that we can learn from it. But at this point, the man of God is on the slippery slope. Right? Keep going down the wrong path. So let's watch what happens. This is back to 1 Kings uh, chapter 13. Verse 19. Verse 19. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass as they sat at the table, the word that, that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. Mm -hmm. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus says Yahuwah. For as much as you have disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and have not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded you, but came back and have eaten bread and drunk water in this place, of which the Lord did say to you, eat no bread and drink no water, your carcass shall not come into the sepulcher of your fathers. Right? So who gave him that message? The prophet that lied. The whole prophet. You have to understand how God works. People will look at this and be like, how in the world did the prophet that lied get the prophecy? Because he was a prophet. Hold, 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 hold that. Go, go to Matthew chapter seven. This is Matthew chapter seven. Try not to jump around too much, but it's important that in the, in the very beginning we say things, and all everything that we say is is based in the book, right? This is Matthew chapter 7. Give me verse, what, 21? Yeah. This is Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Watch what goes up. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not everybody that says unto me, Master, Master, enter into the kingdom. Watch this. But he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Many will say unto me. Look, a lot of people will say unto me what? In that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not prophesied in thy name? Right? Hey, Yah, we speak prophecy in the name of Yahushua. In the name of the Son of God, we speak pro the one that died on the cross for our sins. We prophesy and speak prophecy in his name. Right? Watch this. And in your name have cast out devils. Cast out devils. And in your name done many wonderful works. And do a whole bunch of miracles. Right? All these things were done in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yahushua, right? In the name of the Messiah, in the name of Christ, in the name of in the name of the uh, the Son of God, right? However you want to call it, it was done in His name. But watch what the man said. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. The misunderstanding that people have is, sure, he was a prophet. Guess who else was a prophet? 
Y'all remember Saul? Yeah. Saul was a prophet. Y'all remember when 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 Saul got the anointing put on him? It was a saying going around in, in Israel. Is Saul among the prophets? Is Saul among the prophets? Because he went straight to the prophet and he started to prophesy. Did that stop God from rejecting him and snapping the kingdom away from him? Right? It's important that we understand how God works. Yes, he was a prophet. That's why he heard from the Most High God. That don't mean that the God, Most High God approved of everything that he ever did. That's not how it works. Most High God used him to cause another prophet to stumble. He failed the test. And as a result, the prophet that had the current mission, this is your current mission. I told you to do this, and you didn't do it. Now you punish that. Right? So he said, man, your carcass, your body will not even make it to the gravesite of your father. Let's say sepulcher is talking about the gravesite. Your body will not make it to the gravesite of your father. Right? In other words, your body going to get stuck somewhere. We're going to figure out how that happened. Watch this. And guess what happened to the old prophet? No. Let's see that too. Let me tell you something. Even if you sin, there's a value in the saying exactly what the Most High God say when he said it. Right? This, this prophet spoke presum presumptuously. Right? Most High God didn't say that to him and he said something. But guess what? When the Most High God actually did say something to him, he said it exactly how he said it. Right? That don't clean up the sin that he did, but you can see the Most High God chose to spare him, at least for a moment. You're going to see a little something different, too. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled for him the donkey to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. Mm -hmm. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. And All right. Look at this, though. Go ahead. And his carcass was cast in the way, and the donkey stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. So now picture that, right? The old prophet got a donkey together for him, Saturday night for him. Said, all right, man, you be on your way, right? He riding on his way. All he, of a sudden, a lion looking, pop out. He probably looking at him like, man, you about to die, bro. Yeah, he already know. Okay, they both know it, right? They both know it. Like, I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's about to happen. But you know, this is the thing. Sometimes mm -hmm. these are prophets. So sometimes most high God, they probably dealt with some of this. Most high God gave me this. That thing ain't happened for 20 years. You know what I'm saying? This one didn't happen right away. You know what I'm saying? So they they don't really know. It. This thing, he, most high God can tell you your, your body will never make it. It's like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to probably die of old age. You know what I'm saying? And then something going to happen and nobody can carry me back. Maybe I'm going to die while I'm traveling or something like that. He don't really know when it's going to happen, but he just know, okay, most high God said that, so it's probably going to happen, right? He's riding along. He on the trail. He hit the corner. Ain't even get, get ain't even get far from the block. Hit the corner. A lion jumped out. Eat him. Rip him up. Right? It's a donkey right there. Book say the donkey still standing right there. And a lion right there. The lion ain't touched the donkey. But it got his butt and just stood there. Both the donkey and the lion just standing there. Right? That's unheard of. That ain't different. Right? That's un that's the most I got trying to show you. Like, nah, that was just me. He on that line ain't even really hungry. He did. He didn't. Let's read. Let's look at it. The lion met him by the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way, and the donkey stood by it, and the lion also stood by the carcass. Because I misspoke. I said, I said the lion ate him. Watch this. And lion lion met him by the way and slew him, and his carcass was cast in the way. And the donkey stood by it, and the lion stood by the carcass. Mm -hmm. And behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way, and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it to the city where the old prophet dwelt. Mm -hmm. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, It is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. Look, look at look the, the old prophet talking about him, too. You know what I'm saying? Now, that's the man of God that, you know, that he didn't obey the word of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? He ain't had nothing to do with that. Huh? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Keep going. Therefore, the Lord has delivered him into the unto the lion, which have torn him and slain him, according to the word of the Lord, which so he spake. I spoke. Him. Look what look what the lion did. What did the lion do to him? It slain. It torn him and slain him. Torn, but I mean, lion wasn't even on. 
right? That's why the donkey is okay. Because our God sent a lion that was already full. He did a little upset. I just want you, right? That's the message that the Most High God is a donkey sitting right here. His lion ain't touching, but it touched a man, tore and he slain him. Right? Keep going. And he spake to his son, saying, "Saddle me the donkey." And they saddled him. And when he went and found the carcass cast in the way, and the donkey and the lion standing by the carcass, the lion had not eaten the carcass nor torn the donkey. Mm -hmm. And the prophet took up the carcass of the man of God and laid it upon the donkey and brought it back. And the old prophet came to the city to mourn and to bury him. And he laid his carcass in his own grave, and they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. And it came to pass, after he had buried him, that he spake to his son, saying, When I am dead, then bury me in the sepulchre where the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the saying which he cried by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel, and against all the houses of the high places which are in the cities of Samaria, shall surely come to pass. After this thing, Jeroboam returned not from his evil way, but made again of the lowest of the people priests of the high places, whosoever would be considered consecrated, whomsoever would, he, whomsoever would, he consecrated him, and he became one of the priests of the high places. And the thing so became sin words, unto the house of Jeroboam. So in other words, what he's saying is, well, a couple of things. First, he reemphasized again, but reemphasized again, that the lion did not eat, right? Then after that, it's telling you that the man, uh, the old prophet was saying, listen, he was sorrowful about what happened. He recognized that it's a legit prophet. He feel like, hey, I messed up. So you bury me. Like, I need the same death that he got. Right? So you bury me right next to him. That's, a, that's what he made his people promise. Right? So then after that, the book lets us know that Jeroboam still stayed, stayed steadfast. Even after that happened to him, even after his arm, he still kept making priests of anybody. So the book said of anybody who would wanted to be consecrated. So in other words, he uh, yo, anybody want to be a priest? I want to be a priest. I come on get consecrated. Anybody. There was no barrier, right? There was no requirement, nothing at least to, to the uh to the extent that the most high guy had to have. Right? Um that's the end of the chapter. Yeah. Let's go to Second Chronicles chapter eleven, right? So you'll notice that Kings, the book of Kings, is going to be heavier on the kings of Israel, and then Chronicles is almost exclusively the kings of Judah, not completely, but almost. Yeah. So um, we want to, you know, say we didn't talk a whole lot about Rehoboam. Now we got to go back to. to, to Learn some more about Rehoboam. It's the same timeline. We got to cover two kings at the same time ruling in Israel and Judah. So this is uh, this is Rehoboam, um, and Second Chronicles chapter eleven. Yeah, chapter eleven, verse one. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he gathered of the house of Judah and Benjamin a hundred and. 180,000 chosen men, which were warriors, to fight against Israel, that he might bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam. Mm -hmm. But the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all of Israel and Judah, and Benjamin, saying, Thus says the Lord, You shall not go up nor fight against your brothers. Return every man to his house, for this thing is done of me. And they obeyed the words of the Lord and returned from going against Jeroboam. And Rehoboam dwelt in Jerusalem and built cities for defense in Judah. He built Bethlehem and Etam and Tekoa and Beth Zer and Shoko and Adullam and Gath and Mersha and Zip and, Ador and Adoraim and Lachish and Azekah and Zorah and Ahialon and Hebron, which are in Judah, and all Benjamin fenced cities. And he fortified the strongholds and put captains in them in store of victual and of oil and wine. In every several, and in every several city he put shields and spears and made them exceedingly strong, having Judah and Benjamin on his side. And the priests and the Levites that were in Israel restored to him out of all their coasts. For the Levites left their suburbs and their possession and came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons had cast them off from, exceeding, from executing the priest's office unto the Lord. Right, so now we get more context, right? So the reason why Jeroboam is making priests 
out of everybody, anybody who want to be priests, is because he had to kick out the actual priests and the actual Levites. Why do you think he may have had to kick them out? Because if he wanted to set up altars and all of these things, he would have got a lot of resistance from the sons of Aaron and the Levites. Sons of Aaron wouldn't have gone for it. Yeah, sons of Aaron, they ain't no, they ain't no chumps either. We not son. Look, we come from Aaron. We know where Aaron messed up at. We're not messing with no golden calves. That's just not happening. Right? Sons of Aaron looking at it like, no, we're not going for that. So Jeroboam looking at that like, y'all gonna mess around and keep telling the people to go down there. Okay, I'll tell you what. Y'all take y'all butt down there. I'm gonna kill y'all. They looking like, man, we ain't got time for this foolishness. So they left. Remember, they were given little territory throughout all of Israel. Mm -hmm. Right? So when the book said he left their suburbs, that means they left their territory. Mm -hmm. Right? They left their territory and they went down into Judah. So all the priests are in Judah. Right? Keep going. <sighs> and he ordained him priests for the high places and for the devils and and for the devils and for the calves which he had made. And after them, out of all the tribes of Israel, such as set their hearts to seek the Lord God of Israel, came to Jerusalem right. to sacrifice unto Yahuwah, God of their fathers. So now, it's another detail that a lot of people miss. Out of all of what? Out of all the tribes of Israel, such as, their, such as set their heart to seek Yahuwah, the God of Israel, came to Jerusalem to sacrifice unto Yahuwah, God of their fathers. So there were people likely from all the tribes. The book is saying from all the tribes of Israel, anybody that was like, no, nah, we're not going with this foolishness, they ended up going down into Judah as well. So the tribes overall stayed in the northern kingdom and they was there with that divide. But there were individuals that was like, no, 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 from all the tribes that ended up going into Judah. So Judah contained technically people from all the tribes it just may not have been a huge population of people from all. All right, keep going. <clears throat> and you can see a little bit of that when we go into the uh, New Testament. You know what I'm saying? You're going to see a couple of examples of that. People, you know what I'm saying, that's from different tribes. It's technically from the northern tribes, right? But they actually are residing in Israel, yeah. in Judah. Right? In the Gospels, there was somebody from Zebulun. They said, I yeah, think somebody was somebody. Zebulun. Yeah. Simon was the son of Simeon. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you got a, you got a couple different uh, You got one from, right? Well, Saul from Benjamin. Saul from Benjamin. But, somebody else, who was the, the guy, Issachar, maybe? Might have been. In, in the beginning? Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll get to it. I can't remember. So they strengthened the kingdom of Judah and made Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, strong. Mm -hmm. Three years for three years they walked in the way of David and Solomon. Mm -hmm. And Rehoboam took him Mahalath, the daughter of Jeremoth, the son of David, to wife. Mm -hmm. And Abihel, the daughter of Eliab, the son of Jesse, which bare him children, Jeush and Shemariah and Zaham. And after he took Maekah, the daughter of Absalom, which bare him Abijah and Etai and Ziza and Shilomoth, Shilomith. And Rehoboam loved Maekah and the daughter of Absalom above all his wives and the concubines. For he took 18 wives and 60 concubines and begot 28 sons and 60 daughters. And Rehoboam made Abijah, the son of Maekah, chief, the chief, to be ruler among his brethren, for he thought to make him king. And he dwelt wisely and dispersed of all his children throughout all the countries of Judah and Benjamin into every fenced city. And he gave them victuals in abundance, and he desired many wives. Right. So um, he had uh, Rehoboam had a lot of a lot of sons. So what he did is he took his sons and he gave them territories with them. Yeah, like eighty three kids. Spread them out. Right. And so that with them being spread it out, it helped him keep control. So the book said he dealt wisely with the people. Right. Just smart. Right. He, he did smart things with the people. Then he took his son Abijah who was of his wife. Now, his wife was the son of his uncle, or the daughter of his uncle, rather. Right? His uncle, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely was his uncle. Uh, his great-uncle. 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 Great-uncle? Great yes. David's, dad was David's, David's, David's brother. Yeah, so, no. No. No, 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 it's his uncle. Solomon, yeah, his uncle. Yeah, yeah. Solomon. So, uh, Solomon's brother, Solomon. Yeah, yeah. So, 
uh, what, what was her name? The daughter. She. Yeah, so his the daughter of his uncle, you know what I'm saying, is who he ended up marrying, and he had Abijah. So Abijah, he set Abijah over everything. He is like, because he already had it in mind, that's who I want to be king. So Abijah's being set up for king. You're going to see that Abijah ends up being king, right? But Abijah's being set up for king. All the rest of his sons are given territories all over the land, right? Keep going. Uh, and it came to pass when Rehoboam had established the kingdom and he had strengthened himself, he forsook the law of Yahuwah and all Israel with him. Right? So at first, he was walking after the law like Solomon and David were. First three years. Right? But then after that, after everything was set up and he was riding high, everything was good. After that, he started to do whatever he wanted to do. Let's see. And it came to pass that in the fifth year of King Rehoboam, Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. Because they had transgressed against Yahuwah mm -hmm. with 1,200 chariots and 60,000 horsemen. And the people were without number that came with him out of Egypt, the Lubims and the Sukims and the Ethiopians. Mm -hmm. And he took the fenced cities which pertained to Judah and came to Jerusalem. Then came Shemaiah the prophet to Rehoboam and to the princes of Judah that were gathered together to Jerusalem because so, of Shishak. So before, before we go on, Rehoboam, he spent those three years building up his, uh, Judah, right? So he built up the defenses. He made it feel strong. Once he felt everything was good, he got relaxed and started doing whatever he wanted to do, right? So he stopped following the law. And after that, the king of Egypt came. So he didn't come by himself. He came up with all types of Africans. You know, the African <laughs> boys start running them down. Get these boys, right? They go in there and they take the fifth city. How do you think the city got fenced? Because Rehoboam built up these cities. So they took the things that Rehoboam thought was safe. They took some of them cities. Keep going, watch this. And the prophet said to them, Thus says the Lord, You have forsaken me. Therefore I have I also left you in the hand of Shishak. Mm -hmm. Whereupon the princes of Israel and the kings humbled themselves. And they said, The Lord is righteous. And when the Lord saw that they humbled themselves, the word of the Lord came to Shimei, saying, They have humbled themselves. Therefore, I will not destroy them, but I will grant them some deliverance. And my wrath shall not be poured out upon Jerusalem by the hand of Shishan. Nevertheless, they shall be his servants, that they may know my service in the service of the kingdoms of the country. Right? So when he said they shall be his servants, what he's saying is that the king of Egypt now has dominion, right? So he's run. So they got to pay tribute to him. Mm -hmm. He can tax them. It don't mean that they all slaves in Egypt, right? It just means that he can. He has control. It's like America to Puerto Rico, right? It's like yeah, Puerto Rico, you do your thing, but you know what I mean. That's our territory. We can we can dictate the laws over there, right? So that's the same thing to with with the king of Egypt. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? If he come in and he visit, you know what I'm saying? King of, King of Judah got to bow down in the king of Egypt. Right? Keep going. And he said, he also said, so that they can know my service right. in the service of these other countries. Basically saying, it's a difference. Like, you either going to serve me or you going to serve the people of the, of the earth. Okay. <clears throat> so Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem and took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took all. He carried away also the shields of gold which Solomon had made, instead of which King Rehoboam made shields of brass and committed them to the hands of the chiefs of the guard that kept the entrance of the king's house. Right? So he took, remember, all the gold that, that Solomon had? That boy robbed him. He took a lot of that gold, took all the shields. So instead of instead of the gold, Rehoboam had to come up with something. So he was like, yeah, uh, what else we got? <laughs> brass. Like, we got the brass. Yeah, you can just make some shields out of brass. Do something, Man. right? So we went from being creme de la creme, top nation, can't nobody mess with us, everybody coming from all over the world to talk to King Solomon, to now we got brass shields. Yeah. Right? Because the Most High God had to humble us. Right? Rehoboam, he looking like, immediately, Rehoboam humbled himself. Like, nah, you right. You right now, we messed up. You right. The Most High God said, okay, we have some mercy. But this is what comes with being humble. He's like, nah, make him, make him out of bread. Because he knows, right? He already humbled himself. If mine is, no, we messed up. Go ahead and make him out of bread. What we got? Brass? 
Go ahead and make them all of them. This is where we are. All right? We messed up. This is where we are. Let's see. Keep going. And when the king entered into the house of Yahuwah, the guard came and fed them and brought them again into the guard chamber. And when he humbled himself, the wrath of the Lord turned from him that he would not destroy him altogether. And also in Judah, things went well. So King Rehoboam strengthened himself in Jerusalem and reigned. For Rehoboam was one and 40 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord had chosen out of the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Naama and Ammonitus. And he did evil because he prepared not his heart to seek Yahuwah. Now the acts of Rehoboam, first and last, are they not written in the book of Shemaiah the prophet? And, Ido, and of Ido, the seer, concerning genealogies. And there were wars between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. Right? So them boys was always fighting. The north and the south was always fighting. Right? The book is just letting us know, like, continually, them boys was kind of at each other. Right? Keep going. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. And Abijah, his son, reigned in his stead. Okay, right, what, what chapter is that? We're on 13 now. Chronicles, Chronicles, Chronicles 13. Seven Chronicles 13. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna stop before we get to Abijah. We'll pick up, we'll pick up Abijah next week. Next week we're gonna, we're gonna talk about Abijah. Notice though, Jeroboam is not done. Right? So we haven't heard anything about Jeroboam dying yet. So who's gonna be on the thing? It's gonna be Jeroboam. I'm gonna I'll get another chart next week so we can look at the timeline and kind of see who was living at their same time. But you're going to be dealing with Jeroboam and Abijah at the same time. Okay? Abijah is actually... Let's go to 1 Kings 14. Let's just, yeah, let's figure, let's just finish out Jeroboam. This is 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 1. You know what I'm saying? Jeroboam got some good stuff here. This is 1 Kings chapter 14, one. At that time, Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, fell sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise. Oh, I'm confused now. It's a lot of the same names. Yeah. So Jeroboam also has a son named Abijah. Okay? So Jeroboam has a son named Abijah. Rehoboam has a son named Abijah. Yeah, Jeroboam, Rehoboam, Abijah, Abijah. Right? Sounds very right. Abijah, Jeroboam's son, is sick. Abijah, Rehoboam, son, is going to end up being king, right? Not the same person, but they do have the same name. So Abijah, Jeroboam's son, is sick. Watch this. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise, I pray thee, and disguise yourself, that you be not known to be the wife of Jeroboam, and get thee to Shiloh. Behold, there is Ahijah, the prophet, which told me that I should be king over this people. Mm -hmm. And take with thee ten loaves and cracknel and a cruise of honey, and go to him, and he shall tell you what shall become of the child. Jeroboam, knowing that his son is sick, he was like, I know who you can go to. It's this prophet. It's the same prophet that told me I can take, I was going to take this kingdom. And it happened just like he told him. Take him to him. He'll tell us what we need to do. Right? So his wife is like, okay, let me disguise my, excuse me, let me disguise myself like you said, and let me go on down there. Let's see. Why, why, would, why would he tell her to disguise herself? Probably because he know he ain't did what he was supposed to do. And also, to see if he still got the still got it. Where is this prophet at? Shiloh. Right? So this prophet is in Shiloh. What do we remember about Shiloh? That's where the temple used well, that's where the tabernacle used to be. This is where the tabernacle used to be. This is in Ephraim, it's still in the northern territory. But this is where the tabernacle used to be. Right? So this this prophet is likely somebody who's still loyal to the most high God. He ain't going with all his foolishness. But he would be completely aware of all the foolishness that's going on. So he tells them, like, no, go ahead and hide yourself, because I don't want them to know that you're my wife. I certainly can't go, because I know the man know me. So you got to go, but hide yourself. Don't let them know who you are. We tell them about our son. Right? Watch this. Keep going. And Jeroboam's wife did so, and arose and went to Shiloh and came to the house of Ahijah. But Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were set by reason of his age. And the Lord said unto Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam comes to ask, ask a thing of you for her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus shall you say unto her, for it shall be when she comes in that she shall feign herself to be another woman. And it was so when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet as she came at the door, 
that he said, come in, you wife of Jeroboam. Why feign yourself to be another? Right? So the most high God already gave him a heads up. Like, yeah, she's coming, she's going to try to, when they say feign, she's going to pretend it like fake, right? Yeah. So she's going to pretend to be somebody else. She's going to she gonna fake herself to be somebody else. So, most high God gave him the heads up. He gave Ahijah. Ahijah is the prophet, right? The same prophet that told him, told Jeroboam that he's going to take the northern tribe. So, he gave him a heads up, like, yeah, she coming, she's going to try to be somebody else. She's going to try to make you think she's somebody else, but it's her. So as soon as she he hear her feet, he's like, hey, yo, what's going on, wife of the airborne? You know what I'm saying? Why you acting like you're somebody else? Come on in. Let's see what happens. For I am sent to thee with heavy tidings. Uh -huh. Go tell Jeroboam, thus says Yahuwah, God of Israel. Mm -hmm. For as much as I exalted you from among the people and made you prince over my people Israel and ripped the kingdom away from the house of David and gave it to you, and yet you have not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments and who followed me with all his heart to do that only which was right in my eyes, but have done evil above all that were before you. For you have gone and made other gods and molten images to provoke me to anger and have cast me behind your back. Mm -hmm. Therefore, behold, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam and will cut off Jeroboam, him that pisses against the wall and him that is shut up and left in Israel and will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam as a man takes away dung till it be all gone. All right. So whatever he says that him that pisses against the wall, what he's trying to say is, I'm going to kill all the boys, all the males. All right. So he's killing. He's saying, I'm going to kill all the males. And this is the message that he's trying to get out to Jeroboam because Jeroboam sinned even greater than that of Solomon. Right. So it's like, I ripped this from Solomon. Right. From Solomon's son, rather. But I told Solomon I was going to rip it from him. You know what I'm saying? Through Rehoboam on his account because of the sin he committed. It get passed to Rehoboam, and I do exactly what I said, and I give it to you. But you now are doing worse than what Solomon did, which is the reason I ripped it up. So he's gonna like, oh, because of that, oh, I'm killing everybody. Right? Solomon, through David, and the promise given to David, he got so much grace because of his father that, like, I ain't even gonna rip it. Even though Solomon said, I ain't even gonna rip it from him. I'm gonna let him die for it. And then I'm gonna rip it from Rehoboam. Jeroboam didn't get that because he didn't ever really obey God. Right? Keep going. Him that dies of Jeroboam in the city shall the dogs eat. And him that dies in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. For the Lord has spoken. Arise now, therefore, and get to your own house. And when your feet enter the city, the child shall die. And all Israel shall mourn for him and bury him, for he only of Jeroboam shall come to the grave, mm -hmm. because of because in him there is found some good thing toward the Lord God of Israel in the house of Jeroboam. Mm -hmm. Moreover, the Lord shall raise him up a king over Israel, who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam that day. But what even now? For the Lord shall smite Israel as a reed is shaken in the water, and he shall root up Israel out of this good land which he gave to their fathers. And shall scatter them beyond the river because they have made their groves provoking the Lord to anger. And he shall give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam who did sin and who made Israel to sin. And Jeroboam's wife arose and departed and came to Tizra. And when she came to the threshold of the door, the child died. And they buried him and all Israel mourned for him according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by the hand of his servant Ahiah, the prophet. And the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he warred and how he reigned, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel. And the days which Jeroboam reigned were two, 22 years. And he slept with his fathers, and Nadab, his son, reigned in his stead. All right? So now you have Nadab that comes after Jeroboam. So next week, that's what we're going to read about. We're going to read about all the things that we just heard from, um, from the prophet Ahijah about Jeroboam and how everybody from Jeroboam out was going to be cut off. And we're going to hear about how that happened with Nadab. And then also, we're going to hear about Abijah, the son of, uh, of Rehoboam, and kind of what happens in his time. Okay? Any questions? Of course not. <laughs> All right, let's pray out. 